I wanted to go to Germany because I wanted to see some of these bunkers that has never been seen or built anywhere else. The most fascinating structures. But I found so much more. Holy shit. I'm not making this up. I'm just... Ha! <laughs> Come on, it's an AK magazine! This is part of a Russian gas mask. It's very strange to drive in here uh, through Sussan. This very small, quaint little German town. Please turn left in 800 meters. You would not think there would be a huge underground bunker complex out here. But of course, that's exactly why they put it here, because nobody would expect it to be here. But this is where the uh, high command had their command central, and the Russians used it after the war as well. One of the German army's most important training facilities and large army barrack complexes was known as Trubelaga Sossen, which is why I'm here in Sossen. It's been located here ever since 1910. Almost all German soldiers at that time have passed through this area. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here because it housed one of the biggest secrets of World War II. And yes, that is Reinhard Galen's house. Now this very large complex of very purpose-built, iconic-looking structures never seen anywhere else they were built to look like a regular village. Now my back one and two was a series of above and underground bunkers that was built about 20 kilometers south of Berlin here in the Wunschdorf near Sossen. Now my back one was built starting 1937. It was fully operational 1939 December. The complex here, as you see it, consisted of 12 three-story buildings above ground, and they were all designed to look from the air as if they were local housing. They even had fake windows built into the paneling of the sides. There's also two floors underneath interlinking the bunkers from the two foot thick walls below. Deeper in the subterranean level of my back one, there were wells for drinking water and plumbing, air filtration systems, and protection against gas attacks. There's also diesel engines to keep the system operational. Later, the site was also further camouflaged by the use of netting. The OKW and the OKH commands were stationed here in the two separate facilities in this forested area. The two nearly identical bunker complexes, Maybach 1 and Maybach 2, were built in 1937 to 1940. Now, along with the military fortress complex Sossen, the Maybachs were the instrumental locations for which central planning for field operations of the Wehrmacht took place. They provided the key connection between Berlin's military and civilian leadership to the front lines of the battle. The complexes were named Maybach after the automotive engine. The name Maybach was usually associated with this German car company that made cars and engines and was given to the complex to sort of deceive what the complex actually was. It was to believe it was be part of the production facilities. Construction workers and locals were only allowed to work at the site here for a limited time so they never would gain full knowledge of the scale and purpose of the complex. There was an underground part of this complex named Zeppelin. That also added to the myth of what really was here, since Maybach produced engines for the German Zeppelins before World War I. So we have the Maybach Zeppelin complex, and the Maybach Zeppelin at that time was a legendary 12-cylinder, very luxurious limousine that was built by the company in the 20s and 30s. Obviously being top secret and purpose built, very few wartime photographs exists from this time. In January 1945, the Oberkommando des Heeres, the Supreme High Command of the German Army, OKH, moved into Maybach 1. The Army General Staff moved their quarters into Maybach 2. In 1945, that site was heavily bombed by both British and American raids including one on 15 March that injured the chief of the General Army Staff, Hans Krebs. On the 20th of April, the Soviet 3rd Armored Guards threatened the HQ here at Sossen. 
General Krebs asked Hitler for permission to leave and destroy important items, but by the time he received it, it was too late to destroy anything. By midday April 20th, the OKH evacuated to Eichen near Potsdam and OKW to Kampitz. And the Russians arrived in the afternoon, finding this site empty except for four German soldiers. One was reportedly drunk. Both Maybach complexes were destroyed further after the war, according to the Allied agreements or such. However, Maybach 1 exists as you see it here today, but Maybach 2 were destroyed almost entirely. In the 1950s, they were demolished even further in order to obtain some of the metal from inside the structures. However, there are still parts of Maybach 2 left and I'm going to go look for them and take you with me after this. Now, the Soviets used part of the Maybach complex during the Cold War, and here's the entrance to the Zeppelin bunker. It formed a part of the Cold War era as the installation here of Wunstorf under the name Ranet, and the Soviets added to the installation for their central command and communications functions for the Soviet Army of the GDR. This area was demilitarized in 1994. Now, the Zeppelin bunker, as we're entering now, was erected by the Reichspost on the order of the Oberkommando des Wehrmacht in the end of 1930. This bunker was built in 1937 to 1939 as a signals intelligence center. The code name for the bunker was Amt 500, or Postal Office 500. The structures consists of a two-lane longitudinal building with the measurements 117 meters by 22, with an associated three-story annex measuring 57 by 40 meters. After several project changes, a third entrance was added in 1938. It was called the Reichpost building, and don't be fooled, in Germany, the Reichpost was a lot more than a bunch of people delivering mail. I'll get into that on a special deliberately on just the Reichpost that you know they had a nuclear facility, not your local postal service as you expected. Their third entrance could be accessible by light trucks and directly by the extension with a stairwell and an elevator even. South Tunnel with connecting the bunkers with Maybach 1 and 2 to the southwest. Originally, this tunnel was supposed to have been demolished, and clearly, it has been well exploded. But not until after the Russians were done using it. Now, the Zeppelin bunker is an interesting place to visit, and you can, since they are running tours here out of the local tourist office. There's a lot of different rooms, and you can clearly see where radio communication equipment had been, generators, offices various types and a lot of stairs of the various kinds since you are quite deep underground and it's interesting to see how the complex have survived some of the various demolition attempts over the years but it still stands and is worth a visit it's interesting to walk all these underground hallways where so much communication went back and forth that was so important to the war effort for germany during world war ii and you still see a lot of the original colors and fixtures down here. Also, of course, since the Soviets used it during the Cold War, there's also some remnants of their technology of communications and sorts. I will point out that there's almost no exhibits or conversations about what actually took place here during the Second World War. There's no displays, there's nothing to denote how important a location this was for the Second World War. And perhaps it's because it's being run by a very civilian tourist agency, but I had made appointments uh, several months in advance to fly the 10,000 miles to come here and film a documentary about the site. Once I showed up, there was no one could care less. I could not even be allowed to bring my proper camera into the complex, and there was no one here to show me around or speak English. So therefore, I had to do all the research on my own after the fact. But uh, remember, if you visit here as a tourist, they will not speak English, and they will not be specifically accommodating. Frustrated, I decided I was going to go look for Maybach 2, because that is still hiding out there in the forest somewhere, and this is where it gets good. The whole area is 
is fenced in and back then it was fenced in more and more and more this outer wall does look like Russian built from the manufacturer the way they usually build things look a little bit like that it's very hard to determine what is here and there it's very frustrating uh, not being able to be given an actual tour with information but this is where it gets fun because out here in the woods are 110 years of military occupation of battles of encampments and what i found out here was totally worth the trip just a little bit like Judendorf, this was built by the Kaiser. Started this as also a military range, barracks, artillery, firing range. And ever since the, until the Russians left here, this has been a military area. So I know there's a lot out here, a lot of stuff that had been destroyed in these forests that is hard to find. Except when you see here is a very heavy metal that looks like an old jerry can. That definitely looks like an old can. Military green. Um, okay, I think I know what this is. This, uh, this is part of a Russian gas mask. That is living here next to a Russian turban. So, what? Yeah, this is part of a Russian soldier's gas mask. And okay, what was the canteen? Uh, 200 watt 1050 volt nichts can see that so this was part of an electrical box that's a pole there I guess that makes some sense um, here is a Russian soldier's drinking cup or what's left of it and I'm guessing we're not going to get the rest of well, where that bike was. More metal plating. Now, look at this. Look at this whole area. Somebody just strewed their, pardon my French, shit out here. Bottles, cups, more bottles. Not the size you see every day. What is this? Pieces of metal. And another, another cup. And this is actually in decent shape. There you go. Here we go with a Russian cup found in a forest. And there's something underneath there. Part of a Russian boot. Bottles. So this was probably either just part of a Russian encampment or they just said TH with it and dumped uh, everything out and left town. Without their shoes. Let's take this one with us. Say we were here. Bug away from me. And I did did I help but to notice 
bricks, bricks, more glass, more bricks, square bricks. This area is littered with stuff that, for the most part, what I'm seeing, all looks like Soviet era. Um, shoes, glasses, pillows, cars, it looks like auto parts to some degree. Uh, more ceramic, Is probably a bowl or something. Another soap. Left of it. As far as I can see into the woods, I see crap laying around. Bottles everywhere. I think this is just a Russian encampment that was probably either nearby. And with all respect to my Russian friends, it couldn't be bothered to clean up and toss out and literally just tossed it. Uh, I think they just uh, made a mess and left town. But I do believe there was some, there were certainly structures in there. If there was here, it's hard to tell. These trees have been here for a while. They're not World War II old. They're still fairly young trees, but it doesn't mean the Russians couldn't have had a guard post, access control, something here in that sense. Or they just drove by here and dumped all their trash. Again, found a cup. Cheers. I could stop it every five minutes to see what I see out here. There is simply something lying in the road every single where. Hey! What the hell is that? Speaking of, hold off. Stupid car. What is that? What is that over there? I actually for a minute thought it was a map or a book or something. Ah, damn it. It's an, old, it's an old VHS cassette in plastic. One of those old cassettes you put videotapes in before I was born. But you see everywhere, there's, there's, this is littered with ex-military people's stuff. Stuff from whatever soldiers were here is littered throughout. This will be a full week walk through the forest. And we're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep going. We are gonna keep going. Haven't gone 300 meters. Another running trench, huge mounds. Piece of what looks like toilet, uh, toiletry was a drainage. Very deep grooves around here again trench all the way in there everywhere here holes trenches leading in there trenches leading over here these are very very large holes compared to what I saw the other place again soldiers have just dumped their stuff but over here this is uh, very, very large hole, and there's several of these. Clearly, more shoes. Clearly, something was here, and this is getting to a big. This is getting to be close and big enough that this could could be. Could this be my box too, perhaps? No, can't be. Can't be done. Parallel tracks or parallel trenches. What's this? This is heavy. Oh, see me. What the hell is this? Wire. Battery box is fairly heavy. It used to be green. And a lady's boot. Very fashionable soldiers out here. 
but clearly again how deep these were dug in I'll take the GPS coordinate down again and uh, see if it matches up with where my buck too would be compared to where everything else is around me but this is just this is just uh, the hell is that the hell is that I'm swearing here is actually part of a structure jeez well we can all see what this is Damn, could this be my Batu? I think I found it. I think I found it. For the outer shell, this is obviously not thick or big enough. But for the decorative housing, let's call it that. On those, on the outside of the bigger bunkers, there were these small shelters. And look at these, look at these holes here. And here. You, you, you. Heavy duty rebar. Heavy duty. This is not that heavy. I can still move it. I am standing on top of very large, purposely destroyed slabs. The Russians would not have destroyed theirs. But they did destroy my Batu complex. And I'm walking up an enormous hill underneath, and I can feel I'm walking on cement blocks. I would imagine if you blew up a big bunker like my Batu, you would come to about this height if you piled branches of wood, dirt, branches on top. Here again. This has a shape to it. Not a natural rock shape. That is more I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think, I will check the coordinates, but I think I found my Bach too. The destroyed complex. The Russians had no reason to destroy theirs when they left. In the early 90s, they just packed up and left. The Cold War was over. They took all their gear and equipment with them. Left, or left it to the East Germans. But after World War II, they were under a treaty, or some obligation, or just wanted to, blow up the German bunkers. Holy shit! Son of a motherless goat! Ha! Come on, it's an AK magazine! It's just sitting here. It's been sitting here for a while. Okay, Russians were here. Unless this is from a storm cover. I could not be that lucky. I could... Im Get off me. This has a rich on the... Yeah, this is AK Magazine. And here's more... Three bars sticking out. So now I'm going to compare these square pieces to what was sticking out of the Maybach complex that exists. Uh, obviously somebody came here. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is... I just walked in the forest and found a magazine. I wasn't looking for it. Yeah. Protective walls. Is, of course, this could. This could be protective walls for vehicles. Theoretically. This could have been a motor pool. That is also possible with the cement having a small 
guardhouse, but, but, come on now. I know the Russians were here after the war. I dig that. I dig that. But, doesn't mean that underneath, oh, how very cute. Not sure what unit this was. making this up I'm just Eric you collect axes hatchets I want you to just I was walking here and this is what I see literally just sitting on the ground booby don't know how I'm gonna get this to you in Los Angeles but I damn well will I am just going for a walk in the woods and here I'm finding things that I found magazines, hatchets. This is this is amazing. I don't know what to say. I, I generally do not know what to say. There's look at this. I'm just I'm just going for a walk in the woods. What else is out here? Alright, I did it again. I pulled off the road. No I did not park the middle of it because Quite frankly, I'm in the middle of nowhere. So, holy, um, holy hell. Look at this. If this is not what is left of a giant bunker, then I don't know what is. And you look at that huge stone sticking up over there. Not like that thing is natural now, is it? Yeah. All the trees inside here, younger than 70 years, definitely. I'd, I'd, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it is safe to say that this is what is left of my bark too. Like I said, I think I found it. It is perhaps hard to see um, on a camera just exactly uh, how how large these craters are. And this has nothing to do with this styrofoam box. But this thing up here, the rock that's sticking out, caught my attention from the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. this is it. Yeah. The spacing between the holes, the sizes of them. When they blew it up, I wonder if they covered it up or scooped dirt on the mounds. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's 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 just strange to be here because this had such a vital historical importance. This place, these huge bunkers that was built here. Look like regular houses. Reinhard Galens was over there. Oberkommando was here. Uh, large part of World War II was run from here. And now it's gone. There's nothing really left except these craters. So I guess there is something left. But 
it blew up something that is of vital historical interest. Uh, it's frustrating, especially when the museum are not very accommodating. Uh, at the museum, there was absolutely no mention, no, no, no visuals of World War II. None, really. Not a picture of Galen, nothing. Of the generals and field marshals that came and went. Nothing. No mention of World War II in a place that was built for World War II of such vital importance for the war. And I know Germany has problems with the memories of World War II, but guess what? There's millions of brave German young men that fought that had nothing to do with the politics or the ideology, but just fought as soldiers for their country because they were damn well ordered to do so. And I think it is doing a disservice to their memory to try to, try to destroy the memories, the visuals, the signs, the ruins of every aspect of that war. You're not glorifying war because you show the remnants of it. You're reminding people not to do it a damn well again. And by destroying these places, you are destroying those visual reminders. Oh. <laughs> that was less than graceful. See the metal? There's cement sticking out of the ground. That is left. This is what's left of my back too. This huge complex where so many important decisions were taken. Yeah. That's during the war. And that's what's left. We'll come back here in the winter, I think. When all the leaves are off the trees with a drone and I will Oh yes, definitely. This is what you put on top of bunkers to insulate them from the weather. This is it, all right. We'll come back here in the winter and show you what it looks like from above. Window glass. And again, now you have some more Russian debris. And I wonder I wonder if the Russian soldiers that were here, when they got to the next generation, the young ones, the end of the Cold War knew exactly how important this place was. When they threw their, all their things, their coffee cups, the plates, still lying here, or forgot their magazines. Somebody came home with a magazine missing. <laughs> you get shit for that. But you look at this. Except a lot of ruins and apparently boots. Oh well. Now someone can see this video and they're gonna go, what about boot over there? Go lift it. Take a look, what it is. This is a rubber boot, size 41. Rubber boot size 41 made. Yes, I do not think this is Russian because it does not look like it, now does it? But honestly, I'm not an expert on Russian boots. I truly am not. Yeah, this is my back, my back too. I keep repeating myself, but I'm just impressed that I found it, given that there's no one to point me in any direction. A lot of this above ground stuff is for too Russian. Sorry. A lot of the stuff here above ground is Russian. This was metal. What the hell is that? Could be aluminum. Yeah, look. Look here. This was piled up, and you know what? These, these I saw on the roof of the inside of the Maybach complex underground. These tiles that are piled up here. 
Of course, they could have been piled up here by the Russians and fled. And what do we have here? Here is the other half of that young gentleman's Russian gas mask. Just sitting here in the ground, glass in one piece. That's definitely... Imagine all those years, all those winters, this has just been sitting here. It's amazing. It's still a lot. It still exists. Despite all these years. If I didn't know any better, I think this would be a flower pot. But a battery case, maybe. 82, 48, I don't know. I do not know what this is. Very heavy duty plastic. Through to look, that's Russian. More shoes. There's shoes everywhere here. There's small lady shoes to. Ooh, this looks like World War II. This heel doesn't look like Russian. Even this shoe, this looks like. This looks vintage of the 40s era. Why would there be shoes everywhere? Movies that we have seen everywhere. I am quite sure that within here there's also World War II German bits and pieces kitted in. But this is what's left of my back too. I will come back and explore this area, most definitely. I know it sounds silly, but seeing this is a more fulfilling, as, as a historian, this is a more fulfilling experience than seeing the actual museum of my back one and getting their tour. This truly is, this actually, this I'm glad I saw, I really am. Because I had no idea how to found it and I, you drive around enough, I guess you find it. Still don't know where I am though, but <laughs> I have a flair. I was driving through this little forest path in the middle of nowhere, not far from the Zeppelin bunker, and I guess I, lacking guide, have to start looking. Not at the animals, but I saw a pile of rubble over here. It may not be anything, but man, they've got pieces of cement piled up piece of metal. Yeah, this could be an old door. More of this. I got more rubble. So there was probably a building here that was demolished. It's an interesting forest because I don't know <laughs> what's in it, but I know there was things, a lot of things in there. And I think this quite possibly was where my bark tool was that was completely destroyed. I'm looking at the elevation in the terrain in here. Uh, there's this, an unnatural looking change in the forest floor. So, and a clearing with trees that are younger than the time of the war. Uh oh, here's a, here we go, that's something. I was right. Right, there's something there. Here, yes, yes, yes. Here we have something. So, this path is not, don't know about the path, but this hole here. These trees, it's hard to tell. I would say they could be 70 years old. And this could be, have been here before. Because this is definitely not a natural circle. 
there's an entrance, clear entrance, to a deep hole. And there's another path there. The path there, path there, and there's something sitting right there in metal. This may not be the most interesting for most of you, but this is me on the fly in the middle of Sussex looking for, here's a canal, definitely also man-made, if you see, leading up to that position. There's something metal, this, something left here. Somebody could have dug this up. looks like it could have been a big drum that has been unfolded. There's something else here and this has a square edge to it. This forest is filled with little pathways. It, it might be hard to tell and I can't fly a drone in here to show you from above. What the hell was that? Oh, bugger off. Also did I talk about the insects? Yeah, look at this. Look at this. So here's something else. What do we got here? Right next to this hole that is very identical to the other one. Over there, an entrance to it. And here, oh, lid. Oh, bloody ants. <laughs> uh, oh well. It's definitely <laughs> sitting on an anthill. And here is another indentation in the ground where something was, and over there is another that's even deeper. And this size hole I have seen before. These trees are definitely younger than 70 years. And this over here. Hello. Okay. This is a very deep hole. I would go with basement. So over there at the end, you got square, you got bricks into the ground. I am very sure this is where my box 2 was. And it was completely destroyed after the war. So, here's stepping onto the hole again. Now, oh my gosh, this is. That'll be new. Wine bottle, let's say. SNL. Hard to tell. Point seven one. And here's another hole. And we come to a clearing. And here's another one, another one, and another one. Now, for those of you who spent time in the military, you all know that nature is not ever symmetrical. So when I see things, except spider's web, cobwebs, jeez, that is symmetrical, then I know it has something to do with the bipods that wore various helmets out here. There's, a, again, look at this, this might be easier to see. There are literally holes everywhere out here in the ground. It is very clear. And here's another canal leading down. And there's another, and there's another canal leading up here. So we had running, I don't think this was a running trench. It could have been an old pathway. And then you would have had the uh, 
Now somebody ate here. Now wait a minute, this is, looks like something else. Yeah, I mean, this is very easy to see that there is something here. And yes, the white object sitting down there, I've seen it. I'm guessing it's a football. But nobody would leave a helmet out here for me to find. That would be outrageous. Half dome fiber, but in here it's clear that this was once man made, and we have this something. This is a rock that's again vertical at the entrance of this area. And here you have again, you're looking at very few trees that are well, there's you're looking at smaller trees out here that are all less than 70 years old, which means there were no trees here during the war, which means there was definitely something here, but we already knew that. And here's the entrance to that one. And... Okay, I know what this is. This is... Yes, you say, this is a metal tube. It is a metal tube. Heavier than ah, uh, get this off the stove, right? So this would be a place where a metal detector would be a wonderful thing. But I came here for something else. There's another hole in the ground. Now this has about the size of a two-man trench. But it's really hard to tell. It could be everything else. Oh, we're here towards the car. Where we came from. Tracks again running parallel to each other. And here's another hole. And over there is a white piece of something. Imagine this used to be a bucket. And another hole. There's a spider, let not disturb him. Another hole just like the one over here we just saw. Again, could have been a two-man position. There could have been an armored turret here. Even one of the smaller ones we've seen. And here's another. It really is hard to determine what was here. The Zeppelin bunkers would have been larger, a lot larger, which means these holes, well, they would have been a lot bigger, or the indentations in the ground would have been bigger. Of course, they could also be filled up, and if and if and if, there had been a historian local that would have told me about this, question is, where the hell is the car? <laughs> but yeah, this was my little walk through Sussan Forest. Another track go through here. I just wanted to bring you with me. Okay, this is a running trench. Here we go. This was a running trench. Definitely. That we are following. Honestly, I don't know where the car is. <laughs> I really don't. But yeah, this was clearly... <sighs> so what I'm guessing we're looking at was the outer protection, the outer perimeter, possibly of my about one or two if you have trenches and these holes fit the size of smaller uh, protective bunkers, smaller fighting positions, makes sense. So, 
and the system was not destroyed by the Russians, so there's no fighting here. So those kind of remnants we'll probably not find, except a lot of discarded uh, munitions probably. But here, this trench goes all the way here. It branches off that way and continues this way. This was definitely a trench system, so this is probably the close, the outer perimeter of the Maybach position, which explains why there's very little of it left, why the Russians had relatively little use to use it and preserve it, and probably just let it disappear. This is definitely the outer perimeters, as you can tell. I know I didn't find anything for you that is tremendously interesting, except for a lot of parallel lines and old trenches of the Maybach position's outer protective system. Not much left here. Barely know where here is. This will be a place to come back in the winter with a drone and get an overview of the different patterns and then maybe with a metal detector and a shovel. I would like to find the... Um, I'd like to find the old my back positions. Metal, green, bent, ants. Processed metal somehow. Probably has green paint on it. Used to be green. So in this area there would be there would have been a lot of a lot of stuff in these woods. Thank you for uh, joining me for my little walk in the woods. I see what else is here, but this is what things look like 75 years later. So, a couple hundred meters further down, I see this thing from the road that seems to not be that natural. I know, it looks like a rock, but it's really not. There is a pipe coming through there. And there's a little bit of, uh, not sitting there, but there's rebar. Is that wood? There's a piece of wood sitting here. So this was, this was <laughs> something else. But there is wiring coming from it. It's hard to tell what. But again, this is the biggest piece of cement with rebar I've seen out here. Which gives me the hope maybe there are bigger pieces. I have been, I've been driving further away from the Maybach complex. So theoretically I should be running into less things, not more. Again, all of these trees are relatively young. And there's a fairly open space. See something flat over there. See a can, but that is modern. That flat thing here. What are we looking at? What is this? This mesh, metal metal. Okay. This is metal mesh used for. Could be holding insulation. Oh, okay. And here. Obviously, more ants. Well, this is very hard for me. This is part of an electrical panel. This is. Hey, there's still color on the wires. It, I'm imagining World War II again, era. And, aha! Here is one of those concrete pillars, fence posts. So, definitely, we are back to military construction, World War I, World War II. By the side of the road. This is, oh, somebody, <laughs> egg salad. I don't think this was, uh, Part of the general staff's menu. 
Well, it probably was, but not in that wrapping. So, this is a place that will take a long time, and preferably a little help from one of the locals to, uh, I'm saying tree trunk. I'm just, I am, okay, tree that has fallen over. Fair enough. Tree that has fallen over. Not recently, but there is a piece of wood that used to have paint on it on this side. Hard to tell, paints fade. And here's something else. to tell what that was. There's a lot of different paneling in these constructions. But I guess looking under the tree... Looking under the tree, I said I shouldn't have to. I look under the tree. Find this thing. This is very heavy for a small piece of metal. I'm thinking this is part of a door hinge or a door uh, the door frame I would think damn this is hard it's really hard to see yes I know I should have brought a metal detector because that is really not what I thought I was here for on this particular journey I should rent a horse. All right, let's go on, see what else comes up.